Have a seat, have a seat. Welcome, parishioners, to the Church of Athos. Hope you're excited for a nice little church service for you today. I am. We're going to play first. Love to. Church of Athos loves to go first. So get the command zones all kind of squared up. So we're playing against Riku versus the church. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, let's check out our opening hand, though. Let's get this squared up. There we go. It always bothers me. Uh, as far as our opening hand goes, we do have, yeah, Knight's Whisper, Frexian Arena, a little overseer. That, yeah, we'll keep on this one. Love it. Should lead to a nice little beautiful service. And not, if you're new to the Church of Athers, I'll kind of explain that in a second. Um, let's go and lead off with the Isolated Chapel. That way, if we hit into another black source or something, we don't have anything we need to get down for one. So we'll put that into play tapped. And then anything else, now we're going to go and pass the turn. We are playing Athreos, God of Passage. All praise be to Athreos. He is almighty. Um, <laughs> he's uh, three mana indestructible. Uh, Devotion seven turns into, cre into a creature. And then whenever another creature you own dies, return it to your hand unless target opponent pays three life. Playing against Riku of two reflections. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell you, you may pay blue red if you do copy that spell um, let's see what we draw into Pluto Delta let's go ahead and get that down let's grab the scrub land put it into play untapped I don't think we can put it into play tapped if we wanted to uh, let's grab the scrub land let's go ahead and go for the Knight's Whisper and then we'll be online for uh, Frexian Arena next turn I like that I'm going to play black and then colorless just go and pay white all right and then we're going to go and pass the turn. Uh, Riku the blue red copy target spell and then blue green basically same thing copy target creature spell so and then let's go and lead off with the, uh, ooh, hey, Dark Depths, how are you doing? Vampire Hex Mage, are you doing just fine? Let's go and put you all over here. Maybe we can talk about what we're going to do later. Uh, let's go and get the uh, planes down. Let's go for the uh, Frexian Arena. See if we draw out a counter spell or any sort of removal. And then we do have Vampire Hex Mage in Dark Depths, which is uh, looking pretty nice. Maybe we can get old Mr. Merit Lage to uh, appear during today's church service. So we cover our opponent's commander, our commander. It is free time. We can talk and have some fun. But yes, what is the Church of Athreos? Uh, the Church of Athreos is, is a human, uh, cleric, uh, reanimator, uh, aristocrat style deck. It's just really just, um, there's no real win condition other than just value. Value through killing our creatures and drawing a bunch of cards. So, all right, Frexian Arena, Worn Power Stone, and Dark Confidant. Let's go and get the, uh... now if we go for Dark Depths right away, they may end up scooping. I want to have some fun. So let's go ahead and get the, let's get down Dark Confidant. We're going to mess out on double black if we go for Dark Confidant. Um, let's go ahead and get the Vault of the Archangel down. Into the battlefield tap, we'll be able to go for Dark Confidant. Um, let's get Dark Confidant. I want to get a little bit of extra card draw going. If things get a little too bananas, uh, we can always Diabolic Intent on Dark Confidant. But if we can get some nice little card draw going uh, against Riku, I'll definitely take that. Uh, but yeah, as far as the deck goes, we do have Reanimator. Um, we have some nice little uh, Overseer of the Damned demons in here. We have Keeping on Flavor with the Church. We have demons who are the associate demons of the Church. And then there's just a heavy sacrifice theme. Um, you know, it's always fun to... Uh, to win with uh, something like Rally the Ancestors. High Piece of Pins, okay. And then Esper Panorama and Disciple of Bolas. Let's go ahead and let's get the Esper Panorama down. Probably not going to swing in on this one. If we're going to lose Dark Confidant to the Sad Robot, I don't really want to go for that. Uh, now, if we go for Athreos, it's going to be one, two, three. If we go for High Priest, we'll be able to get the Warm. Let's go for High Priest. Uh, that'll build towards our devotion. And then we can just tap out for the Warm Power Stone and just have a lot of mana. And then if we need to fall back on the Vampire Hex Mage, um, Dark Depths combo, then we can definitely go for that. Anything else? No, we're going to go and pass the turn. Yeah, so how this combo works is we're going to get Dark Depths onto the battlefield. It's going to enter the battlefield with 10 Ice Counters on it. Uh, once we get down Vampire Hex Mage, uh, we can sacrifice her and then put all the cards, uh, remove all the counters from Dark Depths and have ourselves a nice little legendary 2020 Avatar. And since they tapped out, we may end up going, getting it down on the battlefield just to kind of threaten it. Uh, see if they get any sort of uh, flying in the air to kind of stop Merit Lady from coming across. Alright, Frexian Arena, Dark Confidant Trigger. But that sounds pretty good. And then if we hit a lane drop, we might be able to go ahead and get down um, Athreos too. Or hit a swamp, let's take that. Temple of the False God. Uh, let's go and get the swamp down. Actually... Because we double black for let's go and get the dark depths down. Let's go vampire hex mage so we can represent the combo. And then we can go and use that planes to get down the um, authority of the council. Get those down. Uh, whenever creature enters opponent under whenever a creature enters the battlefield under opponent's control, we're gonna be able to gain one life. Let's go and go for that. And then now that we have Dark Depths on the battlefield with Vampire Hex Mage, there's pretty much nothing they can really do to kind of stop that. I do want to swing it for two. No, I think we're okay. So what we can do is wait until their turn. If they have something like a Cyclonic Rift or Unsummon, they kind of bounce it back to the hand. But at least we can get the uh, Merit Lage token going uh, at the end of our opponent's turn and sacrifice it. Kind of start rock rocking and rolling. Uh, but outside of that, we do have Diabolic Intent. I don't know if there's anything we need to exactly tutor for just yet, but uh, we'll kind of see. My installation. I'm going to cast a spell. Exile's top card. Not on the card. Okay. 
And then let's go and go for the Vampire Hex Mage activation. See if, that, if they want to swing in. We might be able to clear a blocker or something like that. Okay, not going for it. Let's go Vampire Hex Mage. Remove the counters from Dark Depths. Oh, beautiful. Merit, <laughs> Merit Lage. I have not seen you in a while. How are you doing? Looking just fine. Dark Confidant, Path to Exile, and then uh, Scion of Darkness, uh, Damnation. Okay, let's go ahead and get the uh, let's get Temple of the False God down. Let's go and swing it with 20 in the air. And we can get some life length off that too. Coming in hot. Now if we go for the activation, we're not going to be able to get down Athreus, but I think we're okay. We'll gain 20. I'll take that. Black, white, and then double colorless off the temple. They go to 10, we go to 39. Almost our original life total. And then we can go for Extractor of Sin, but I like leaving a path to exile. I think that's okay. And one of my favorite things to do is we can go for Disciple of Bolus on Merit Lage token. And then gain 20 and draw 20. And then get some stuff in the... Yeah, I think we're going to go for that. If that resolves, we're not going to swing in. Oh, opponent scoops it up. Uh, I'll throw this into the scrap bin, but... Uh, yeah, man. Disciple of Bolus on Merit Lage token is always a lot of fun. But yeah, unfortunately, they kind of scooped it up. And uh, I'll just throw this into the scrap bin. It was a nice little uh, fun getting Merit Lage rocking and rolling, too. So, all right, everybody. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Nomad Fireworks Show. Hope you're excited. Let's, yes, we're going to play first. Get the graveyard squared up. Playing against Saskia. Saska. Saskia. Sassy. Miss Sassy. Yeah, we'll call her Miss Sassy. Now, as far as opening hand goes, we've got Irrigated Farmland, Port Town, Pool from Tomorrow. Um, yeah, maybe if we had some fetch lands, I would maybe keep on this one. We could dig a little bit deeper with Is It Charm, but yeah, let's go and mulligan on this one. Not too excited with that. Uh, Manamo, Personal Tutor, Psychonic Rift, got the Monolith. Ooh, we'll pull out our neck on this one. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and keep. we got a Scry, and then we have another Scry from Temple. Okay, we had a White Source. Put that on top. That sounds great. Let's go ahead and get the uh, Manamo down. Anything else? We're going to scry next turn. We're going to go and pass the turn. We're playing Namat, the Devastator. He has flying. Whenever Namat deals combat damage to a player, you may pay three if you do destroy up to two target lands. Playing against Miss Sassy. Uh, she has vigilance and haste. Whenever she enters the battlefield, choose a player. It's usually going to be us most of the time. Uh, whenever a creature you control does combat damage to a player, deals that much damage, that much damage to the chosen player. So kind of like double strike in a unofficial way. Let's go and get down the Temple of Epiphany. That way we'll be online for the Monolith. And maybe we can get down Namat and start swinging in hot. Dragonlord Ojatai. Yes, I will put that on top. That sounds good. I think that's now we're going to go and pass the turn. But yes, welcome to the Namat Fireworks Show special. Hope you're ready to hop off that plane at LAX with just a dream and a cardigan. We're going to welcome ourselves to the land of fame excess and wonder if we're going to fit in. We're going to look to our right. We're going to see the Hollywood sign. This is all going to seem so crazy. Everybody seems so famous. <laughs> yeah, that's Miley Cyrus' Party in the USA. I love that song, man. <laughs> yep, that's why we got Namat, Party in the USA. Namat loves that song, too. Man. Hey, I could 100%. This is not a lie. Okay, let's go and get down the Battlefield Forge. Let's go for the Monolith. And then yeah, we may end up going Dragonlord Ojatai. I think that sounds pretty good. We can go Dragonlord next turn. We can still untap the Monolith the following turn. We can still leave up, well actually no, we got to tap for white mana so we can't leave up Path to Exile. But we can go for a personal tutor with uh, Dragonlord if we want to search something up uh, for sorcery speed. But we'll figure out what we want to go for. But yeah, Miley Cyrus, man. I love, I'm not a huge Miley Cyrus fan outside of Party in the USA. But Party in the USA, that is a, I love that song. And <laughs> I'm not doing a bit. Well, you take me to karaoke, I, I don't even need the karaoke machine. I'll get up there and just sing the whole song for you <laughs> like the like just now i just did that all, yeah, i could keep going too but i didn't want to have the, <laughs> the video keep going but uh but yeah that's what we got going on man it's a good song you know it, it's a good song because our tummy's tucking and we're feeling kind of homesick and then sometimes we there's too much pressure and we're nervous and then when you're nervous like that that's when the taxi man he turns on that radio and that jay-z song was on so we're going to put our hands up, singing our song. Okay, we're done. All right, no more Miley. Let's go ahead and get the Glacial Fortress down. It's going to come into play tapped because we have basically no plains or uh, islands yet, but we have a nice little assortment of dual lands. If Sundering Titan's in there, we'll be okay. Um, let's go ahead and go for Dragonlord. I like this a little bit. Of, uh, we can start swinging in, get a little bit extra combat damage. And we do have... Uh, we, ha we can go white, blue-white... 
and then one, two, three off the monolith. We still have the uh, Manamo to make sure that we can untap the Dragon Lord Ojatai and make sure it still has hexproof as long as it untaps. So get that down, and then we have Path to Exile to kind of take care of our opponent's commander if they get that down and start coming in hot with combat damage. Now, as far as the Nomad Fireworks special, what do we have going on? So coming in at the red firework at the six drop, we have Inferno Titan. He loves himself some fireworks. Really, he likes fire to begin with. He's pretty crazy. I don't know why we put him in charge of the fireworks stand, but he is. And uh, we've reached that point, so it is what it is. Uh, coming in at the six drop for the blue fireworks, we have a little bit of Aetherling. I love Aetherling. Really fun card, if you're unfamiliar. It's six drop. Um, Aetherling, um, it, blue mana, make it unblockable. Blue mana, um, bounce it, exile it, and then return it to the battlefield at the end of the next turn. And then they have the... Uh, the colorless mana to give it, so you can end up making it like an 8-1, I think, or 7-1, something like that. And then coming in at the white firework finale, we have Elspeth doing a little bit of cleanup duty with some nice little, uh, some nice uh, little 1-1 one -one soldier tokens, clearing the board out of some bad, bad, mean people. Then coming in at the double color 5-drop slot, we have Dragonlord Ojatai out on the battlefield, representing the blue-white. Uh, coming in at the blue-red, we have Karanos, nice little control style finisher, a little bit of card advantage. And at the red-white firework finale... My favorite red-white card. Assemble the Legion. A lot of fun. Love that card. Okay, so we have Dragon Lord. Probably going to swing with Dragon Lord. We can untap it and then block our opponent's commander if we want to. Enlightened Tutor. Okay. Let's go. So if we swing with Dragon Lord Ojitai, just comment and look at the top three cards in your library. Put one in your hand, the rest on the bottom in your library in any order. We could Enlighten Tutor to put a artifact onto the battlefield and still leave it Manamo. Uh, let's go ahead. Yeah. I was thinking we could Personal Tutor and still get Entreat the Angels, too. So let's go ahead and let's go Enlighten Tutor. Because we get what three drop can we get? Let's go and swing in first. Let's see if maybe we can't hit the land drop for the turn. Yeah, we have not made the land drop for the turn. <laughs> if we light tutor for a three drop, we have the monolith, we have the coalition relic. We, you know, let's just go and connect and see what happens first. I kind of shake it up, maybe we hit Sphinx Forever or something like that. All right, so we deal that combat damage. We're going to be able to untap Manamo if something comes across. First, Restoration Angel enters the battlefield, exile target, uh, creature we control. Do we want to go for Frantic Search? It allows us to dig a little bit deeper, and we still leave up Manamo. Let's go ahead and grab that. Well, if we go Restoration Angel, it'll be a nice little 8 clock damage in the air. Let's grab the Frantic Well, we can flash that in. Yeah, let's go and grab Restoration Angel. Let's put those on the bottom in any order. We do miss out on the Enlightened Tutor, uh, but what we can do is we can um, flash it, bounce it, and then uh, have it block on the uh, Sasuke, or we can miss Sassy, or we can just simply flash it in and stop them from coming across. So basically, with their comp, with their ability, with her Miss Sassy's ability, um, it doesn't really have double strike. It's just a Vigilance and Haste. So they're going to be swinging for three, and then that damage is going to get amplified out. So we can sit there and just flash in Restoration Angel, kind of chump block for a little bit. Uh, we still have Path to Exile, Enlightened Tutor, if we're going to go for that. So, and we may end up being okay with them swinging in for uh, three on this one. It'll be three commander damage and six up top. We have a whole little assortment of stuff. Zergo, Helm Smasher. Haste attacks each turn to Fable. Uh, indestructible as long as it's your turn. And then whenever a creature dies. Okay. So, we got a little bit of stuff to do. So, that's going to be 14 coming across once we go for that. Got the cr uh, Crop Crasher. Whenever it attacks, target creature can't block this turn. Okay. See if they're going to go for the exertion on that one. So what we can do is instead of untapping it, we can flash it in, bounce the Dragon Lord, it'll come back, and we can... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and go. Let's flash in Restoration Angel. Oh, dang it. I shouldn't have uh, tapped that Battle Forge for one damage on that one. Sorry about that. All right, so we're going to flash in Restoration Angel. We're going to bounce Dragon Lord Ojatai. And then let's... Oh, <laughs> beautiful. Let's go ahead and go right here on the... Uh, there, Dragon Lord right there. They're tapped out. We don't have to worry about any sort of damage. We'll take care of their commander. Take care of the uh, crop crasher. And then next time we have Path to Exile and Zergo. So, be in a good spot from there. Okay. They're going to get some extra combat damage off that Zergo. That is unfortunate. Puts it down to 14. But we're in a good spot. We have Dragon Lord in the air. We have Restoration Angel coming across. And then uh, hold, and then we have Personal Tutor. We can put something on top. Let's go and get the Scalding Tarn down. And then um, we're at 5 total mana. Let's go ahead and crack. We need uh, Red White, Blue White. Probably wouldn't hurt to grab another Blue White source. Yeah, let's grab a um, let's grab a Tundra. Okay. 
Let's go and swing in. We still have a path to exile to kind of take care of Zergo. Well, actually, we need to do it this turn. Well, it doesn't matter because it's going to be, we're not destroying that creature. Okay, I'm going to go and swing in. Got the Dragonlord Ojatai swinging in, Restoration Angel swinging in for three. Look at the top three cards of our library, Jace and Is It and Gilded Lotus. So if we go Gilded Lotus, tap out for that, that'll still give us Path and Enlightened Tutor mana. I like that. Let's go and grab the Gilded Lotus. We kind of want to bust this open. And with the Gilded Lotus and the Monolith on the battlefield, um, we get that down. We get in a spot where we can finally untap the Monolith. So let's go and get the Gilded Lotus down. But we're gonna have to, yeah, we'll have to tap out for white, but we're okay with that. Because we can Light and Tutor, grab an Artifact or Enchantment, and then we still have Path to Exile up. Kind of put them in a spot where, you know, maybe if they want to swing in, they can. And we still, you know, if worse comes to worse, we still have, um, um, excuse me, we can't untap the lane. <laughs> we can tap the Gilded Lotus to untap it, but no, that does not make sense. Okay, so we got Ultimate Price, Destroy Target, Monocolor Creature. That is a Monocolor Creature, which I'm glad they drew into that, because Dragon Lord Ojatai is, uh, does not have Hexproof, because we swung in. Let's see if we can't get past this. Let's see what they're tapping out for. Their commander does have Haste, once it hits the battlefield. And then with Dragonlord Ojitai, we can sequence it to where whenever it attacks, it deals damage equal to its power to defending a player. Okay. Let's see if they're going to go ahead and equip that on there. It's equipped for three. It's going to be one, two, three. So in response to that, we can go ahead and go for that Path to Exile and then still go for the Enlightened Tutor. Okay. Let's go pet. Make sure we tap. There we go. Tap for Triple White. Let's go Path to Exile on Zergo. I think that's a fair trade. I'll take that. That'd be 14 coming across. That'd be four, seven. Okay. Opponent scoops it up. They're at 18. Uh, we had Dragonlord Ojitai coming in hot uh, the following turn. So, yeah, we're going to chalk this one up as a win. I'll, I'll take that. Hey, man, you got to get your wins wherever you can. So we kind of grind it up. You know, we don't have a definitive win on this one. Uh, but with the triple white, we had Pad to Exile. Then we had Light and Tutor to put something on top. Dragon, Dragonlord Ojitai swinging in for three, puts him down to 13. And then with Namak coming across the following turn. And, you know, things got a little sticky. We had Cyclonic Rift, too. So I'll take that. Nice little 4th of July. 4th of July show for you so all right everybody have a safe one if you enjoyed it like and subscribe thanks bye what's up everybody welcome to some ishkana night weavers hope you're ready to jump in that spider web hang around with ishkana in the spider web maybe eat some bugs stay up late <laughs> i don't know that's stupid okay dumb all right uh sorry shouldn't hit you in the face with that yeah i love this opening hand we've got vessel scroll rack read the bones we will keep on this one and a little orange reef to kind of make sure our spiders are nice and big they eat their weedies um <laughs> Dumb. Let's go ahead and get the. Uh, <laughs> what sounds good? We can get the Misty Down Crack, go for Vessel, or we can just simply go for. Uh, get the Bayou Down and go for Vessel. Um, let's go ahead and get the Bayou Down. Go okay, next turn, Vampiric Tutor. I'd like to be online for Scroll Rack. Let's just go ahead and get the Bayou Down. Let's go for the Vessel. And then uh, maybe we just kind of keep hitting the land drops. We don't have to get Orin Reef down just yet, but if we need to get it down for Read the Bones, we can go for that. Because next turn we can go for Scroll Rack, and then kind of shuffle our hand up with Misty or something like that. And then we will go and pass turn and let our opponent do their thing. We have some partner action. Pretty cool. Interesting partner combination. I'm excited. Uh, but first of all, let's start off with the star of the show, the spider. Actually, the, there we go. Hold on one second. Star of the show. Let us do our land drop first. Um, let's go and get down... Let's go and get down scroll rack. Yeah, let's go and get the Misty. And I think I'm going to be okay. We're going to go ahead and crack on this one and grab ourselves a nice little uh, overgrown tomb. We're going to have to shock this bad boy in. And let's go for scroll rack. Anything else? No, we're going to go and pass there. Okay. So we're playing Ishkana. She has reach. Uh, Delirium. Uh, whenever she enters the battlefield, there are four more cards that are basically, once we have active Delirium, which is four more card types in our graveyard, we're going to be able to create three one two green spider tokens with reach. Then for seven mana activation, target opponent loses one life for each spider that we control. Opponent gets a land down. Um, let's go ahead and get the, get the Orin Reef down. Let's go for Mind Stone. We can go for that. Um, yeah, let's just go and get the Mind Stone down. Our opponent's not off to a crazy start. They are looking at... They do have four colors, and they've got um, the only part of it. They are missing blue, so... But yes, we're playing some partner commanders. We're playing against Silas Wren. Uh, Death Touch, whenever it enters the... Whenever it does combat damage to a player, choose target artifact card in your graveyard. You may cast it this turn. Then we're playing against Sadar Kondo. Um... <laughs> Kondo, maybe. This, I don't know. It just sounds like a, a condo. Sounds funny. Uh, creatures your opponents control without flying or reach can't block creatures with power two or less. Okay. Conjurer's Closet. So we're sitting at four mana. We can go for a Read the Bones. Um, we do have Naturalize on so Sword of Body and Mind. I don't think they're going to be able to equip it just yet, so we can at least hold on to Naturalize. Um, let's go ahead and go for... If we want to have active uh, Vessel... 
Let's go ahead and crack the vessel. Yeah, let's see what's on top. Maybe we can hit the lane drop. Yeah, that's going to be two car taps in the driveway. We're going to really top four cards of our library. Ooh, Panharmonicon. Mm. Blighted Woodland, we can get that down. I like Panharmonicon. Let's take Panharmonicon. Okay, there's three car taps in the graveyard. Um, and then we have, still have Naturalize online. If we want to exile something, we can kind of shuffle it away. Or if we want to, just simply just Vampiric Tutor for something like a Kadoma's Reach and then get him on the battlefield. Because uh, one of the things we would have probably searched with Vampiric Tutor uh, would have been something like Panharmonicon. We want something that's going to amplify the number of tokens that we can generate. And uh, Panharmonicon is very, very good at doing that. Love it. What we could do is we could Vampiric Tutor for Life on the Loam. That would be a good way to make sure we keep hitting our land drops. Um, so we may end up going for that. But, um, but yeah, let me double check the Sadar real quick. So creatures your opponents control without flying, okay, or reach, can't block creatures with power two or less. Gotcha. And is that flanking? Okay, now I thought he had horsemanship, but because I, I saw the horse, but no, it's just flanking. We got it. But yeah, this is an interesting partner commander. Hey, this is what makes the when they made the uh, partner uh, mechanic. I was like, well, that's really interesting. It allows people to kind of build whatever they want. I mean, because uh, last thing I was thinking was going to be this partner combination as far as this deck is concerned. Let's go ahead and go for while we have the mana. We can't vampiric tutor. Let's naturalize on sort of body and mind, and then during our upkeep we can. Uh, we can Vampiric Tutor for Kodoma's Reach? Yeah, let's go on Vampiric Tutor. I'm pretty sure we have Life from the Loam in here. I may end up grabbing Life from the Loam. That way we can start dredging, get in a lot more, um, kind of really opening, make sure we hit, keep hitting the Yeah, There we go. Let's grab Life from the Loam. I want to make sure we keep hitting that land drop. And then we're going to go for green. And then let's go ahead and get the Misty down. And that'll be enough card types in the graveyard. Anything else? No, we're going to go and pass turn. Okay. So, yeah, we do like Panharmonicon. Uh, what we can do, if we don't like... Con when the Conjurer's Closet with Panharmonicon sounds just delightful. <laughs> sounds really good. We do have Scroll Rack. So, one, exile any number of target cards from your hand face down. Put that many cards on top of your library. Um, so, if we want to, we can start shuffling away some cards. Uh, but I think at this point, I, I really do like what we have out here. And we have the Blighted Woodland, uh, sack it, search for two basic lands, put them on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Um, and then we can just keep getting the repeat uh, fetch land off the scroll rack to kind of grabbing some forest and then kind of going from there. Larceny, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to player, that player discards a card. All right. <laughs> Very interesting. All right, so we're going to have the uh, Sadar swinging in. Um, I guess on this one, let's see what we want to get rid of. We could always bring it back with uh, Life from the Loam, dredging it. Alright, so there's four card types in the graveyard. Let's go and crack the Misty. Grab that force, put it on the play. And then anything else. Now we're going to. Okay, let's kick it over to our turn. So we're going to. Yeah, let's go and dredge. That way we can just keep. If we can keep dredging lands and getting them in the hand, then we can just really get around that, uh, that Larceny over there. So it won't really be that much of an issue. And uh, do we do want to go for. We need to get down Panharmonicon. One, two, three, four. So we go one, two, bring it back, make the land drop. Yeah, we'll have enough to go for that. So let's grab those. Yeah, we go Panharmonicon. Then we need to make, su make sure we set up the Orn Reef to where we can um, tap it when we, once we get the spiders down. Uh, let's go ahead and get the Misty down. Let's go ahead and crack that for a green source. And then let's go ahead and go for this Panharmonicon. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so we have Panharmonicon. They're going to swing in again. Uh, that Larceny is going to trigger, and that will put our uh, Blighted Woodland into the graveyard. If you want to still dredge again from Life from the Loam, we can grab a few more. Um, we will be online for each Kana, but if we do dredge Life from the Loam, it's going to be 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We do need to get into spots where if we're going for each Kana, we make sure we have enough to tap the Orin Reef, so we kind of want to leave that up, so we may not go for Life from the Loam. But if we do get down Panharmonicon and Conjurer's Closet... <laughs> Might take a little bit of setting up, but I, I kind of like that. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. But yeah, this is... Um, and then this is one of those things where I'm like, this is a random partner combination. I wouldn't have said that. And then we've got a full foiled out deck over here, so we know our opponent means business. Not that not that any of our opponents, don't, they don't always mean business, but it's uh, a little bit of a hint. When you see an off foiled out deck, that's like, okay, you know, kind of tighten your commander bootstraps up a little bit. Be like, all right, we got this. We can do this. We can make this work. <laughs> 
<laughs> Tap it out for five mana. Let's see if they're getting down. Prophet of Crufix. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Swinging in for two. It's going to be four total commander damage. Puts us down to 19. This discarded card. Let's get down the Blighted Woodland. And then let's go ahead and dredge that life from the loan. We want to get some more lands in the graveyard. Bajuka Bog. All right. Now, if we just go for Conjurer's Closet, let's do some setting up. All right, let's go live from the loam. Let's grab that Foul Orchard. We kind of want another Black Source. We're getting a little bit bottlenecked. Let's grab that Misty. Yeah, we're going to kind of fuel our hand for the... Because um, we want to get down Conjurer's Closet. One, two, three, four. So we need to get the Misty down. That'll be five. Let's crack the Misty. And then get down the forest. Let's go for Conjurer's Closet. Luckily we have Life from the Loam. Otherwise we'd just be taken up behind the woodshed as far as this, uh, this Larceny is concerned. Okay, so now we've got down Conjurer's Closet. Now we're getting somewhere. So next turn we're going to go for each Kana. We just kind of wanted to do a little bit of setting up. So each Kana is going to come down. There's going to be six spiders. We're going to be able to bounce at the beginning of the next... At the, um, the next instep or on our next turn get a few more spiders and then we get into spots where we're gonna have like 12 we'll have like 13 spiders on the battlefield that'll be one just drain for one active activation and with the Orin reef we can put a plus one counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn so we'll wait until that uh, each kana comes down that last time we get those spiders on the battlefield and we'll go for that nice little Orin reef activation and then we'll rock and roll from there Untap all lands, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash. And then with the Silas, uh, whenever you deals combat damage with player, choose target artifact, you may cast it. Alright. It would have been nice to go for the Bajuka Bog, but we're setting up some nice little spiders. And that will be protection from uh, green and blue, so we need to keep that in mind. Oh, bummer, man. Got the Trigon Predator. Whenever you deals combat damage with player, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. Got it. Alright, so they're going to be able to swing across next turn. More than... We'll see what they want to go for. And this is why... Man. I, I wish they... You know, the, the one versus one in Commander ban list. I don't mind it. You know, I don't mind that they're trying to build something, but... Prophet of Crufix is just... <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was glad that thing was gone, man. <laughs> when they said... When I realized that it was like... When they came out with their ban list and that wasn't back on the ban list, I just remember being like... Uh, there's just so many Simic games where she's on the battlefield, and I forget that she grants Flash, and there's just, there's no end point in turns, and you, it's like your upkeep, and they're like, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it's their main phase, sorry, excuse me, we're, we're, and then the next thing you know, it's like, oh, Jolt, it's your turn, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, I don't have the will to live anymore, <laughs> after Crufix just flashed in a million creatures with a million mana, <laughs> and it's not that, I don't know, it's just the fact that, you get to untap all your lands, and I don't know, it's just, oh, <laughs> it gets out of hand really quick. I wish that one had stayed on the ban list. I think, you know, especially if they're going to cut off, uh, get, take away Blue's cantrips with, like, uh, Ponder and Preordain and stuff like that. Or, yeah, why don't you kind of throw Prophet or Crew Fix on there? Uh, anyways, okay. So we're discarding a bunch of cards, which we're okay with. Uh, they're going to be drawing a bunch of cards, one, two, three, four. We go for Ishkana, we get that down. They're going to go for the Conjurer's Closet. At least we'll get a Panharmonicon activation. But at this point right now, yeah, I think they're going to—they're probably going to go and get this one. But the only way we're going to be able to kind of grind this one out would be something, some sort of removal. So at least we're not going to dredge next turn, but uh, we're going to give it our best. But this is a pretty cool deck. Always yield, always yield, always yield, and then always yield. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Cards in the graveyard. Luckily, we have, um, you know, if we didn't have life from the loan, that'd be a bummer. Then we draw a few cards, and then, but yeah, I think it's just the untap step. That's what, that's what gets me in. That's always a, ugh, don't like it. <laughs> I, think, and I don't remember, I've already said it, but it's just really confusing sometimes. I'm like, whose turn is this? Oh yes, we got a Terrastodon or whatever, the little elephant dude. During my upkeep, okay, yeah, <laughs> that seems fair. <laughs> upkeep, do I get to untap? No, excuse me, yes, I do have a response. I have an elephant that'll destroy three of your permanents. Oh, yeah, that right, okay, sounds good, buddy. <laughs> okay, put a step it up for three mana. Yeah, I'll probably uh, see what we draw into. If we draw a board wipe, that'd be beautiful. If not, then we're going to go ahead and pass this over to the foil gods, saying, hey, you got it. 
We, we almost lived the dream. Panharmonica, we did a lot of setting up. But, you know, we, maybe we could have got down each kind of a little bit earlier. Demonic Tutor, put it into your hand. Hey, well, that is a board wipe. Let's keep this thing rocking and rolling. We may have to go for some Toxic Deluge. Love it. <laughs> now, if they have a Counterspell, they're going to get it. But at least if we can get this. Yeah, it's going to be a little hard, though. They have a lot of mana. We'll see. We'll grab Toxic Deluge. Where are you? Well, it looks like we don't. I don't. I didn't put Toxic Deluge in here, so that's a good way to end the video. I thought we had Toxic Deluge, but I'm, after this video, um, unless it's in the graveyard, I could have swore I put it in here. So the only board wipe we have is Damnation. That is correct, and we don't have enough black to go for it. Am I seeing this correctly? Yes. Yep. We could Arachnogenesis, create the spider tokens, a uh, number of creatures attacking you, but it's not really going to do that much. Hmm. Yeah, we just don't have enough mana to do anything. Good game, buddy. Yeah, should I, I'm going to go put Toxic Deluge in, <laughs> in this uh, after after this game. So I'm going to go and throw this into the scrap bin. Good game, buddy. Definitely enjoyed it. All right, everybody. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. What's up, everybody? Welcome to some Gaunti. Grand Larceny, hope you're ready to steal some stuff. Let's get the chat closed out, see who we're playing against. Salvala, sweet. Let's get the graveyard squared up. Now, as far as opening hand, yeah, love it. We've got uh, Double Swamp, we've got uh, Knight's Whisper, Swiftfoot Boots, a little protection for Gonti. Yes, we will keep on this one. And Conjurer's Closet. We start bouncing Gonti, get them all going crazy all over the battlefield. Let's go get these Swamp down. Anything else for one? Now we're going to go and pass the turn. We are playing Gonti, Lord of Luxury. He has that touch whenever Gonti enters the battlefield. Look at the top four cards of target opponent's library. Exile one of them face down. Then we may spend our manas or any color to cast that spell. Playing against Silvala. Uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, if it's, its controller may draw a card, if its power is greater than each other creature's power, then for one green mana activation, add X mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool, where X is the greatest power among creatures that you control. Okay, let's go ahead and get the swamp down. I think at this point, instead of going swift foot boots, because we don't really care if Gonti's on the battlefield or not, let's go ahead and go for sign in blood. Let's go ahead and uh, draw two cards, lose two life. We're okay with that. It's going to put us back to our starting hand. Right now we're just kind of digging for just some quick mana or something that allows us to kind of get ahead quick on mana because we want to get definitely try and beat Silvala. It's funny, playing mono black really does allow you to between coffers and the ancient tomb and some of the uh, you know just the amount of heavy artifacts we have in here. You can ramp pretty quick against a ramp deck. So that's what we got going on. So we're gonna sign in blood, target player draws two cards, loses two life. Sign the little contract with our little prick our little finger. So if this resolves, waiting for opponent to uh see if they this this is good or not. Holding up their counter magic, deciding if they want to go for force of wield or not right now. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we got swamp, we got the resonator. Anything else? Now we're gonna go and pass this turn. Cover both commanders. Okay, we're good to talk. But yeah, if you're uh, if you're new to my channel, if you haven't seen Gonti, we are playing Gonti. Uh, name of the game is to. We want to really amplify the number of triggers that we're getting out of Gonti. So we're running stuff like Conjurer's Closet. At the beginning of your instep, you may exile target creature you control, then returns to the battlefield under your control. So what we can do is we can get down Gonti, exile it, and just keep getting it down, bouncing it, getting those triggers going. Uh, we also have the Resonator, copy tra uh, target triggered ability you control. So for two mana, we can copy another Gonti trigger. It's going to allow us to get an extra look at the top four cards of our library. And what makes Gonti so fun is the fact that we are... Our opponent's deck just becomes an extension of our deck. We have everything to set Gonti up to where we're basically going to be leeching off of our opponent, which is always fun. Always fun. Love it. <laughs> Definitely enjoy it. Okay, let's get the uh, command zone square uh, closed out. Uh, we do hit a swamp. Let's go ahead and get the swamp down. So we have Knight's Whisper we can go for. We're a little far away from a Dark Petition, but once we go for Knight's Whisper, we're going to be online for... Um, for a Dark Petition spell mastery. Yeah, let's go ahead and go Knight's Whisper. Hopefully we can, uh, well, that's, that's something. Treacherous Surge actually is not that bad against Mono Green. There might be some uh, pretty nice creatures hanging out in the hand. Anything else we need to do? now? we're going to go and pass the turn. Um, as far as new cards that I've added to the deck, what do we want to, uh, let's see. I think at this point... 
have to we're gonna, yeah let's uh, we're gonna chuck McKay. we're just pretty far away from having an army of creatures right now it'd be nice to have Micaeus, but um yeah I mean, it, we'll, we'll make it work okay so we have treacherous urge a target opponent reveals his or her hand you may put a creature card from it onto the battlefield under your control it gains haste sack at the beginning of the next instep so playing against mono green usually they have a huge amount of not huge amount but usually they have big payoff creatures in mono green so maybe we can catch something uh, out of the hands with treacherous urge sack and make it go to the graveyard uh, i did put a new card in this gaunty deck it's misinformation. Somebody suggested it, so shout out to you. Um, but yeah, I've got it in the deck. And, uh, ooh, Lana War Elves. Cool. Foil version. Nice, man. But uh, yeah, I've got it in the deck. Misinformation, what it allows us to do is, let's say our opponent, um, we can put three cards from our opponent's graveyard on top of their library. So we can sequence a Gonti trigger to where we're really going to get some nice, you know, let's say it's late game and they've cast a bunch of good spells. Well, we can put that really good spell back on top of their library and make sure that we have the uh, the select Gonti trigger that we actually want. So it looks like we're actually playing against... Uh, True elves over here. We got a lot of uh, a lot of elves on the battlefield. So these Gaunty triggers may not be the best, but we do have Dark Petition to grab uh, Damnation if stuff gets a little too uh, a little too crazy. Let's go ahead and get the let's go ahead and get the swamp down. Yeah, let's go for that. And then anything we want to go for, we could do a little bit of setting up um, with the Resonator. I think at this let's go ahead and go Gaunty. Let's get this move in. Uh, we could, you know, we'd have to take another turn off, go for the Swift Foot Boots and the Resonator, hopefully the land drop, and then get to the spots where we're, like, turn six going for Gonti. But, uh, yeah, we're okay. Okay, the Silvalo Trigger, and then we have the Gonti Trigger. Crop Rotation. Well, that will definitely turn into a Coffer, so, yeah, we'll take that. Everything else is just lands. Anything else we want to do now? We're going to go in fast turn. Okay, and that's actually pretty good. So, with crop rotation, uh, additional cost, sack a land, search your library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. So, we can sack one of our swamps, uh, get coffers onto the battlefield, and with Urborg, we're going to be able to turn all of our um, lands into swamps so we can really start generating a lot of mana. And then that really kind of opens us up on the dark petition as far as what we want to go for. Um, let's go ahead and move. Actually, now if we just go Conjure's Closet. You know, we're playing against green, so we have to watch out for artifact destruction. But um, we can go Conjure's Closet. We can really start getting some, uh, some shenanigans going. Let's see what we got going on. So the untap ability, three mana. This creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. We had two mana. And then they're adding the greatest, uh, greatest power among creatures that you control. So we're looking at four, five. And then one, two, three, four. Oh, and then I guess we're just going to keep keep doing this. I wonder what their payoff card is. They've only got six cards, I mean, three cards in the hand. Because we're looking at next turn. We get down Urborg. We do have Spell Mastery online. But they're still going to have the, the mantle on the battlefield. So it's going to be really hard for us to kind of get around. They could minus three. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures that you control. Yeah, they're going to keep pumping up. Yeah, they can just keep looping it. Yeah, we're going to go and scoop this one up. Um, draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures that you control, which they just did. Ten cards, and they're going to cast. Yeah, I'll just go and You got it, buddy. They're just infinite mana like that, and they're going to have it. So we'll probably just go ahead and throw this one over into the uh, the scrap bin. So, all right, everybody, if you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye. What's up, everybody? Welcome to some Tana action. Hope you're ready to get that compost pile going. We're going to play first. Yeah, Tana, she's been, uh, hey, we need to get that compost pile going. She's been on been on us to do it. Uh, now, as far as our opening hand goes, love it. If we had a color source, I would love to keep on this one. But uh, we're going to have to mulligan on this one. Let's see what we mulligan into. Yeah, this is not too bad. We've got asceticism, nice little protection for us, and we're playing against Apollo. Sweet little uh, uh, power of the battle of the uh, the females on this one. Uh, yeah, we're gonna keep on this one. Let's get the chat. Uh, Crown of Flames. I think we're okay without that. We'll go and put that one on the bottom. Uh, let's go ahead and lead off with. I guess we're gonna get the Scalding Tarn down. Let's go ahead and crack, and then grab the. Uh, We'll grab the uh, the uh, what is it? The cycle land. I can't remember the name of it. Shelter ticket. Let's get the ticket down. I'm going to pass turn. You too. Best of luck. Get the chat closed out. I love playing against Apollo. Apollo is a fun commander. Okay. We are playing Tana the Blood Sower. Uh, she has trample whenever she deals combat damage to a player. Create that many 1 1 green sapling tokens. And then we're playing against Apollo. And I'll cover what she does. Let me put you on the bottom, buddy. 
What are you doing coming back? Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and shock the stomping ground in, yes. And let's go for Uzama's Jite. Get that down. Anything else now, we're going to go past there. Uh, playing against Apala, pilot. Dwarf pilot, vehicle pilot. Uh, other dwarfs you control get plus one, plus one. Each vehicle you control gets plus one as long as it's a creature. And then whenever the Apala becomes tapped, you may pay X if you do reveal the top X cards of your library. Put all dwarf and vehicle cards among them into your hand and rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Okay. Dapala. Let's go ahead and get the, uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and get the fires of Yavi Maya down. Yeah, let's go for that. We've got the, uh, Toolcraft Exemplar, uh, clock coming in hot. Uh, get down the fire. Anything else now, we're going to go past turn. Okay, so we have Tranquil Thicket. We can get down next turn. We can cycle it. If we don't hit the land drop, we're probably going to go ahead and put it down because that's going to be the fourth land drop for Tana. And then we need to get into a spot to where we can get down. Actually, if you have Asceticism in the hand, um, especially with us playing a Voltron-style deck, Enchanter-style deck like this, I always like to go for Asceticism first, get that down. That way they have to have an answer for Asceticism and then have an answer for us. Uh, it's like spot removal on some of our creatures. So that's what we're going for. Sword of Fire and Eyes. Well, we can get that down. Let's go and get the Sheltered Thicket. Let's go and play that. Let's go for Sword of Fire and Eyes. Get that down. Anything else now, we're going to go and pass the turn. Uh, but yeah, as far as this deck, this Tana deck, this is a Voltron-style deck. And, and also, we're using the Enchanter's card drawing engine to get our card draw up and running. So um, as far as the Voltron pieces go, we do have a lot of um, artifact equipment in here. You can see this is a heavy artifact equipment game. We have Uwazama's Jitte. We also have Sword of Fire and Ice. They're swinging in for seven. It's going to put us down to 16. Sylvan Library. Hmm. Yeah, I guess at this point, might as well just go and go Tana. We need to get this going. Yeah, we've got a nice little Depala clock going, so let's get down to, um, get down Tana, and then we get in a spot where we can put on the Sword of Fire and Ice next turn. Um, the if we hit the land drop, then we can go Uzama, Uwa's jump. Excuse me, Uwazama's Jitte, and then we can put him on there. and We'll have two pieces of artifact uh, equipment on there. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we need to get it going. We're looking at 16 coming across these little Foundry Foundry Inspector and the uh, Tool Crafter, kind of putting in some work. So. But yeah, as far as the deck goes, we're running uh, Voltron-style pieces in here. Uh, we have a lot of enchantment pieces in here, but, you know, the way it kind of shakes out is we're running stuff like Sword of Fire and Ice, which we do have... Um we do have red enchantments in here, so if we put Sword of Fire and Ice on Tana, she's going to get protection from red, and that enchantment's going to fall off. So that, that's something you do have to watch out if you're playing for the deck. But some of these Sword of Fire and Ices are so good, they allow us to just get into spots where we can really push Tana in, where she can swing in and attack and get those saplings going, that it's just um, it's better that we go ahead and run them and not uh, go 100% full Enchantress. So... You know, it's just a little bit, I would, I don't know what the breakdown is, I would probably say it's about 60 Enchantress and 40%, um, you know, stuff like Sword of Fire and Ice and Uzama's Jitte, so, okay. So we got the, uh, we got the Toolcraft swinging in for 4, puts us down to 12. Tana's got the, uh, waving her little, uh, axe over there to the people, so hey, back off, man, leave us be. Okay. Worn Power Stone. So, if we go Sword of Fire and Ice, protection from red and blue, that's going to give us protection from uh, Dapala. Um, but, that is not a red or blue creature, so we're looking at a crew up for six. She's going to run right into that. How do we want to sequence this? Let's go Worn Power Stone, but then that turns us off on Sylvan Library. I would love to just hit the land drop for the turn next turn. We have Asceticism, that's really not going to do much. Creature, target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. It's going to be six. We're going to trade on the Peace Walker Colossus, not get any sort of saplings. Um, let's go and go for Sylvan Library. A little bit of a long shot, but we can go and go for it. And then we'll go and get the Sword of Fire and Ice on Tana, and then we'll, uh, you know, if they want to swing in with the 6-6 six, six Peace Walker, sure, go for it. If not, then we can kind of... Um, start connecting on some combat damage on whoever they want to swing in. So we're kind of forcing them to start tapping some creatures and get the Peace Walker Colossus kind of fired up. There, I like that. Yeah, it's a little bit better. So hopefully we kind of hit the lane, drop off the Sylvan Library and go for Asceticism or Crown of Flames. And then once we... That's the thing with Tana, though. You're looking to build this certain... Ta even if your opponent's playing an aggro-style deck, you're looking to stop them from building a, a really... Oh, Fair Gun Mourns. That's a uh, little Oblivion Ring Dwarf over there. You got it, man. Yeah, not gonna be able to stop that. Unfortunately, we could not get the uh, get Tana down. Um, we couldn't get the asceticism down. That, that's always a bummer. Siege modification. Oh yeah, we're getting uh, the pilots hitting the Noxus, <laughs> the nitri nitrous oxide coming in hot. Uh, that's gonna be 10, 13, 16, 17. You got it. Boom, boom, shakalaka. 
That's no more. We are dead. Okay. Vominos. We are roadkill now. What did we do to you, Depala? That's not cool, man. She beat us up. That's... Alright. Throwing, throwing this in the scrap bin. Alright, bye.